Welcome back to the mirror. And know you're not alone. Because this, come on, Jesse, one more, is a reflection of an unstoppable community in the mirror. Do you recognize her? Big Sky is creating big buzz, and episode two airs tonight on ABC. Now, the premiere had a shocking twist, but don't worry. We're not going to spoil it for you. If you haven't seen it's happening now, President-elect Joe Biden introduces his national security and foreign policy team. New at five, how some of his key members, including the first Latino, will be making history. The plus, they've heard the warnings, but find out why Thanksgiving travelers at San Antonio Airport say they're still willing to fly during a pandemic. And nearly a million crockpots are being recalled. We're going to show you which ones cause third degree burns. Thanksgiving is almost here. I'll help you prepare weather-wise and take the latest look at our rain chances for Friday and Saturday. Coming right up. As you begin your holiday shopping, how about saving some money? It can be as easy as scanning your receipts and you get cash back. Coming up, we'll show you how. The News at 5 starts right now. And we begin with a live look from Sky 12 over an active scene where Bear County deputies are investigating a high speed pursuit that ended with a suspect being shot. This incident began a few hours ago on Highway 87 in Stewart Street. The chase went on across two counties. Now traffic is backed up as deputies survey the area. That's where we find our Courtney Friedman. Courtney, what can you tell us about what started this incident? Well, first of all, guys, we're right here next to 87. You can see the sprawling crime scene right behind me. There are at least 20 to 23 units just that we can see. And as you said, the traffic is backed up in both directions, and there are more deputies right there. So this all started when a China Grove police officer tried to make a traffic stop for some outstanding warrants, and that driver did not stop. They basically started speeding away, high rates of speed, all the way up to Sutherland Springs, made a turnaround and then came back towards town. In China Grove, that officer said that that suspect was pointing a gun at him while driving. So then BCSO was hearing this on the radio, got involved. BCSO directed their deputies to help. They deployed spike strips twice. The second time it did work. So that suspect car stopped where that BCSO deputy had stepped out of his unit and drawn his gun. They asked the suspect to stop the car and drop the gun, but that didn't happen. Uh, he actually did collide with the patrol vehicle, and the deputy, while running backwards and issuing commands, was actually struck by that vehicle. Uh, luckily, he was thrown clear of it. He did suffer some injuries, but it was, it was non-life-threatening. Uh, however, the, the deputy did fire several shots in self-defense, and we know that the, uh, the suspect was struck at least one time in the upper body. So that suspect was hospitalized and is now in critical condition, undergoing surgery right now. The deputy, who was also limping at the scene, they said had minor injuries, but they're going to make sure to stay in touch with him, and he's at the hospital right now. A woman was a passenger in the car and was arrested. They did find drugs believed to be heroin in the car. The BCSO deputy involved was a six-year veteran, three of those years on patrol. He is now on administrative leave pending this investigation. Now, investigators here, we've seen them kind of searching and combing this whole area. They are looking for at least one gun, possibly more. We asked if that is specifically the suspect's gun. They're not really sure. They just know wep one weapon, if not two, were involved. And of course, the sheriff made a call to the DA's office. There is a prosecutor as well as a DA's office investigator here on scene working directly with deputies. And uh, they're asking for patience from the public. Obviously, as we told you, there's a ton of traffic in both directions. We hit it while coming in. Uh, it's going to be a while, guys. So, you know, if you're in this area, I would try to make your way around because uh, this investigation is going to be lengthy. For now, we're on the east side. Courtney Friedman, KSAT 12 News. Back to you. Thank you, Courtney. Airports across the nation seeing an increase in travel despite the CDC's warnings it could worsen the spread of COVID-19. However, those who are taking the risk say they're doing it and they're doing what they can to stay safe. Jesse Degriato shows us what Thanksgiving travel was looking like at San Antonio International earlier today.
busy, though not as busy as you'd think two days ahead of Thanksgiving. The usual excitement and anticipation at San Antonio International this year has an underlying sense of awareness in a man heading to the East Coast. I try not to touch much, you know what I'm saying, and I keep hand sanitizer and all that on me, keep a mask on at all times, and I feel like you'll be safe. A woman flying home to Colorado. And of course, I wash my hands, I wear my mask, and I try, you know, keep my distance so I stay safe. Same with the family who couldn't take staying at home anymore. But do mom and dad have any concerns? Honestly, I don't. Uh, I think everybody's pretty safe. Uh, everything's very clean. We're staying in our own cabin, so we're not going to be in a busy hotel, and we're going to do outdoorsy stuff. Eager but still cautious travelers. We still have to go out and meet family, but we should be very careful. Have kept airlines busier than they have been. Are they as busy as they were last Thanksgiving? No, no, we're, we're, we're not as busy as we were last year. The city's aviation director, Jesus Sainz, says travel right now is down about 60 percent, but with increased COVID-19 precautions and protocols. Perhaps doing so, a reason to be thankful for travelers already grateful. For my family and that we soon will have a vaccine. Jesse Degollado, KSAT 12 News. San Antonio police are looking for five robbers who allegedly zip tied two homeowners and robbed them during a home invasion. That incident happened at a home on Cincinnati Street. It's on the west side. It happened just before 2:30 this morning. Police said the robbers kicked in the door, tied up the couple inside. They then allegedly stole cell phones, cash, televisions, and perhaps most interesting of all, their car titles. No one got hurt. The victims only identified the suspects as men dressed in all black. A woman now in custody charged in connection with a fatal crash from back in October. 22-year-old Mariah Flores charged with failure to stop and render aid, resulting in death along with driving while intoxicated and driving in an unauthorized vehicle. That fatal crash killed Alex Reyna. It happened October 24th on I-10 East near Highway 37 South Junction. SAPD says Flores changed lanes to pass the victim when their vehicles collided. The victim crashed into a large sign and was killed on impact. The Bear County Medical Examiner identifying the victim in a fatal hit and run crash this morning, 66 year old Jose Manzanales. The crash happened yesterday when the victim was on Gillette Boulevard crossing onto Zarzamora Street. Police said the suspect, 22 year old Harley Del Bosque, allegedly hit the man and then drove off. The victim pronounced dead at the scene. The suspect later identified himself to police and was charged. The states of Pennsylvania and Nevada certifying their presidential election results today. Another step signaling that the election is over and the transition is underway. Karen Kafa reports Biden made some key introductions as his administration takes shape. Joe Biden preparing to write a new chapter in U.S. foreign policy with the help of some familiar hands. They embody my core beliefs that America is strongest when it works with its allies. The president-elect formally introduced his foreign policy and national security teams the day after the Trump administration finally formally acknowledged or ascertained the presidential transition. Leading the foreign policy team, Biden has tapped longtime aide Antony Blinken as secretary of state. Tony's been one of my closest and most trusted advisors. Everything. And his top messenger to governments around the globe, a move praised in diplomatic circles. Tony Blinken was not only deputy secretary of state, so he truly understands how this position works, but he was also Biden's foreign policy advisor. In addition to emphasizing experience, Biden also keeping a campaign promise to build a diverse cabinet, including Alejandro Mayorkas, a Cuban-American, tapped to serve as Homeland Security Secretary, and Avril Haines, who would become the first woman to serve as intelligence chief. Charge. President Trump, meanwhile, appearing briefly before reporters Tuesday, touting the Dow's milestone, but not taking questions. The stock market's just broken 30,000, never been broken, that number. That's a sacred number, 30,000. Nobody thought they'd ever see it. Then making the annual turkey pardon. In Washington, I'm Karen Kafa. Meanwhile, checking in on the pandemic across America. Right now, nearly every state and territory in the U.S. seeing a surge in COVID-19 cases. For the 14th consecutive day, the country has set a record for current hospitalizations, now up to nearly 86,000, according to the COVID tracking project. 
Since the beginning of the month, there have been more than 3 million confirmed cases. And since the start of the pandemic, more than 250,000 people have died. One doctor in Minnesota talks about how they're not just taking care of strangers. They're now also taking care of their coworkers. It's heartbreaking. We're taking care of colleagues who we see in the halls every day and people we work with that we're now having to take care of patients. I think we're all just really, really scared of what's to come because the hospitals are already full. Meantime, demand for testing skyrocketing ahead of the holiday. People lining up across the country, some waiting up to eight hours, others unable to find an available test at all. Now, during the holiday season, people are racking their brains for ways to get together and be safe with their loved ones. One of those steps could be getting a COVID test just to make sure you don't have the virus. But as Myra Arthur explains in today's Health Minute, that is not a sure bet. Longer lines in a testing rush. This is the scene all over the U.S. as people scramble to get tested for the coronavirus before holiday gatherings. My daughters are coming home from college uh, in two different places in the U.S. But testing isn't a foolproof way to make sure you're in the clear from the virus. U.S. Surgeon General Dr. Jerome Adams says those negative tests are only good for that day because of the incubation period for COVID-19. It takes on average five days, but up to 14 days after you've been exposed to have symptoms. A negative test yesterday or Sunday doesn't mean that you're safe tomorrow. It doesn't mean that you can relax your precautions. It also matters what you do after you get the test. Negative at the moment you get your test results. You can leave the testing site, say go to the grocery store, get exposed and then contract the virus. And for holiday travelers, that includes places like airports and gas stations. That's why the U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, along with medical experts, have we urged are, people not to travel for Thanksgiving. We are literally going to start vaccinating vulnerable people within the next couple of weeks. But we just need you, the American people, to hold on just a little bit longer. And right. it's not too late to have a safe holiday celebration. Myra Arthur, KSAT 12 News. Taking a peek outside, we have a decent amount of sunshine. Well, for as uh, long as the sun is still up, it sets closer to 530 these days. And we did get, look at this, a few hundredths of an inch of rain at the airport, six hundredths of an inch to be exact from those sprinkles earlier this morning. Then the sun came out and we dried out. Hey, better than nothing. 65 was our low this morning, so that's well above the average of 47. Then we topped out at 83, 84 in Del Rio, 88. Currently, Eagle Pass, we're 79 in West Kerrville. By and large, we've got upper 70s to low to mid 80s across our area. And you see the rainfall totals, according to our weather watchers, pretty minimal, a few hundredths of an inch here and there. As we go through the rest of the evening, we'll see temperatures falling off slowly through the 70s. A cold front hits tonight. We'll let you know what that means for tomorrow and Thanksgiving. And an update on those promising rain chances coming up, Ursula. I like the sound of that. Thank you, Adam. We do have a recall you need to know about. It could affect your Thanksgiving food prep plans. More than 900,000 crockpots are being recalled. The brand is Sunbeam. It's the crockpot six quart express crock multi cooker. It is sold uh, from July 2017 all the way to this month. Buyers reported that while in the pressure cooker mode, the lid suddenly could detach. There have been about 119 reports of the lid coming off, resulting in 99 burn injuries, some as severe as third degree burns. The crock pots are sold at major stores like Walmart, Target, Amazon and more. If you have one of these, officials say you need to call the recall hotline and get a replacement. You might have noticed some of us at KSAT are kind of changing our look letting it grow. Well, a quick update on the No Shave November challenge to raise money and awareness about cancer research and prevention. Right now, the KSAT team is ranked as the third highest organization in the U.S. for money raised. It's one of the reasons I love our viewers. We have more than $6,800 in contributions so far. We still have a few days left for this fundraiser for a link to donate or see our latest beard or mustache photos. You know, you can keep watching to see mine, or you can head to KSAT.com to see the team. Love watching that. Saving money while shopping. It's more important than ever at this time of the year. We're going to tell you about some apps that you can download right now to save you money and even give you some cash back.
New at five, an easy way to save money on your groceries, gas, and even holiday shopping. It's sort of like coupons, but who has time for that? We're talking apps and websites that give you cash back for your purchases. 12 Your Size Marilyn Moritz takes a look at a couple that'll put a jingle in your pocket. The one that I use the most often is Fetch. That's Fetch Rewards app. Just install it on your phone and snap a picture of every receipt you get. I have found that that's the easiest because you can scan any receipt from any store. You get at least 25 points for grocery receipts. 1,000 points equals $1. You can redeem those points for gift cards to retailers like Amazon or even a MasterCard or Visa gift card. Nina Woods lets her points pile up, then redeems her reward. I just recently um, did $35 for an Amazon e-gift card. You can also link Fetch Rewards for online shopping. I got hooked on this and now my husband's hooked on it too. Lisa Carr is hooked on Rakuten. If you download the Rakuten extension on your browser, every time you shop online, Rakuten will alert you if you get cash back on the site you're shopping. Just activate the rebate, and start saving. My lifetime earnings, $737.73. Rakuten sends you a check every quarter, and on Thanksgiving Day, you will get 15% back with most retailers. Those are only two options. Here's another one. It's an app called Ibotta. Right now, they have a Thanksgiving deal where you shop at Walmart, you scan your receipt, and you get $10 back on your turkey. You can gobble up that deal through Wednesday. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. All right, you just missed Adam doing a turkey call. You can do it again. See, yeah. It's token every time that this year. Excellent. You gotta break it out. <laughs> excellent. <laughs> anyway. We have a lot of weather to talk about. We actually have a lot going on. Let's start with a look at our headlines. A comfortable Thanksgiving. We're going to get that out of the way right now. Let you know, beautiful the next couple of days. Cooler weather by the weekend. You'll notice a big temperature drop and then rain chances. They're still in the picture. They're back and we're gaining confidence in some decent rainfall. So let's start with a look at those rain chances and our overall weather pattern and what's going on right now. A little bit of activity moved through earlier today and with that activity we had a few sprinkles out there especially this morning that moved through town a little damp dampness a few hundredths of an inch here and there but that was it the bulk of the energy with that disturbance off to the north of us especially up the plains and into the central u.s good moisture out there we just got clipped by it and not a whole lot of it around here, but better than nothing. This is that disturbance that caused it and actually it's going to swing a cold front through later on tonight. We'll talk about that cold front in a minute, but let's talk about these rain chances. Our system that we're focusing on will be for Friday and Saturday and right now it's just basically in western Canada, dropping into the Pacific Northwest. This will continue its trek southward. We'll continue to watch it, monitor its progress, and then what's most likely to happen with this is it digs southward and it cuts itself off from the main flow and actually taps into some Pacific moisture as well. It'll throw energy our way. We should have adequate moisture around and it should stir things up enough to boost our rain chances quite a bit as we particularly get into Saturday. So here's what we're looking at here. Friday, about a 40% chance of some scattered activity. Then we get into Saturday and we're looking at about a 60% chance. So the showers becoming a little more numerous. Of course, we still have some time between now and then and we will be fine tuning these rain chances and the timing of the rain. But right now, at least we're gaining confidence in at least some rainfall and the potential for some drought denting rain in some parts of South Texas. So that potential is there. We just have to wait for it Friday, Saturday time frame. Dew points now back into the 60s for a good chunk of South Texas. So humid out there, but cold front hits tonight. We get rid of the humidity for Wednesday and Thanksgiving. Remember comfortable, pleasant the next couple of days and nothing to worry about weather wise. You can be outside all day long, all evening long. Not a problem. Friday, you'll notice that humidity spike, but that's also going to help with our rainfall. Let's talk temperatures. 80s right now, even 90 in Catula, 90 in Laredo, 82 San Antonio Gonzalez at 80 degrees. Cold front off to the north. Look at Amarillo at 38, Guymon, Oklahoma, 37. Now this cold front's going to swing through, but it's not going to take that bitterly cold air into town here. We're going to start the day tomorrow at 56. So 56 tomorrow morning, sunny all day, low humidity, 
making it up into the upper 70s. So we'll be well into the 70s by tomorrow afternoon with a north wind at 5 to 15. Then we get into Thanksgiving, 40s in the morning, 70s in the afternoon, not too humid either. Friday, Friday and Saturday, the better rain chances, especially on Saturday. And I'm going to separate the seven day for you right here. Just look at those temperatures. Highs in the low 60s this weekend and next week. And we could have our mornings in the 30s by Monday. Thank you, Adam. All right, so coming off a win, you would think they'd be celebrating, but there were some concern. A at major Cowboys concern, yeah. They had an incident that happened this morning, what they're calling a non-COVID medical emergency involving one of their staff members. When we come back, we'll give you the latest what happened at the Dallas Cowboys headquarters today and another sibling rivalry when it comes to the Houston Texans and their next opponent, Detroit, coming up. Pro football coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. The Dallas Cowboys confirmed the strength and conditioning coach Marcus Paul suffered a medical emergency this morning at 7.30 a.m. was immediately attended to by Cowboys medical personnel before being rushed to the hospital. The players were informed during a scheduled 8.05 team meeting and were then told by head coach Mike McCarthy that today's practice had been canceled. The Cowboys also canceled McCarthy's scheduled press conference as well. We knew there was an issue when players began asking for prayers for Coach Marcus, as all of us do today. As per Paul's family, he's undergoing further medical tests and additional information will be released at the appropriate time. On Monday, McCarthy was asked to evaluate the performance of Andy Dalton, who started for the first time in three weeks after recovering from a concussion and COVID to throw for three touchdowns in the Cowboys' 31-28 victory over the Vikings. I thought Andy played very well. Uh, I think really the the ability to just stay you know, healthy with, with the run-pass mix was, was exactly what we were looking for. Um, but, you know, just getting back and, you know, I, I think like anything, those early completions always serve any quarterback well, especially after a three week layoff. So uh, I thought I thought he did a heck of a job. Now the Cowboys have only one more day to prepare before they face Washington Thanksgiving Day at 3.30. The Houston Texans were able to get in their only practice today before facing the Lions in Detroit on Thanksgiving Day. One of the matchups we'll be watching is a sibling rivalry. Safety A.J. Moore Jr. was asked what it would be like to go up against his brother Lions safety C.J. Moore and how competitive they were growing up. It's amazing, man. It's a dream come true. Uh, definitely been looking forward to this shoot our whole life, man. And ever since we've, you know, put on shoulder pads and a helmet and it's finally going to happen. I want to do everything better than him. He want to do everything better than me. We compete on, you know, the, the craziest stuff. Who can eat the most food? Who wants the biggest piece of chicken? Um, who can make their bed the best, clean their room the best. I mean, it's crazy, man. Yeah, it's awesome. We will see the battle of brotherly love on full beginning at 1130 a.m. on Thanksgiving Day live from Detroit. The Baltimore Ravens are also scheduled to play on Thanksgiving Day night against the undefeated Pittsburgh Steelers, but they had to call out practice today due to do more positive coronavirus tests on Monday running backs. J.K. Dobbins and Mark Ingram were placed on the COVID-19 reserve list while defensive tackle was placed on a close contact. And now today, according to ESPN, more positive COVID-19 tests, as many as nine total. Right now, the game is still on. But very much in on doubt. the brink. <laughs> yes. Yeah. yes. Thanks, Greg. We'll be right back. Thanks so much for watching the News at 5 with us. World News is up next. We'll see you back here at 6 o'clock.